So it was very early morning, you know, and the mission was just to basically kill, capture a high-value pig commander that was located up in Shock Valley with an undetermined amount of fighters. Made the flight in, once we got there, helicopters came to hover and we were expecting them to land in this river bottom and they just kind of kept hovering so we were kind of looked at the crew chief and he just, just told us to go. And we looked down, it was like, it was about a 10 foot drop off, unfortunately. It was just rocky and a lot more treacherous than we thought, which was, you know, not a great way to start the day. So I remember specifically at that point, those of us in our element that was down in the riverbed were basically immediately just found covered behind some rocks. It was just kind of quiet, and then all of a sudden, it just, everything kind of exploded all at once. Machine gun fire, some RPGs started going off, and then started returning fire up towards the village. That's kind of when things started getting a little haywire. Once we got up there, we saw immediately that you know Dylan was shot and then Luis was shot. Everybody else was kind of hunkered down, had decent cover, but not the best cover. Scott and I kind of, with the captain, kind of looked around, tried to figure out exactly what we wanted to do, how we were gonna get the wounded guys out of there, and then you know see what made sense from that point. I went down, about halfway down, called a couple more of our guys and, and asked them to bring more commandos up so we could basically make a kind of a chain to help pass these casualties down because they were going to be on litters. I went up, I went back up to kind of see, assess that situation and then really figure out, okay, like how we're going to handle this. And Scott was ambulatory, so meaning he could walk. He'd already had a tourniquet put on, his upper left arm here was shot. So I was basically able just to kind of get him up on his feet and then helped him kind of climb down. I passed Tim, I gave him to Seth, and asked Seth to take him. There's like a little house down, kind of towards, almost at the river bottom. And that's where John was, his leg, he'd been shot in the leg, it basically was amputated, so he wasn't able to move, and then Ron still had Dylan and Luis to deal with, who neither of them could move either, because Luis was shot in the ankle, and then Dylan in the hip. So I went back down about halfway again, trying to establish a, a way, like a corridor to kind of move these guys through. I knew we couldn't go up the same way that I'd gone the other times, just because it had been getting pretty heavy fire. So we, there was like kind of a cliff face that went around to like a little outcropping. That we basically, I saw if we could scale across that, we could get onto this little outcropping and then we'd be able to come up from behind where the, those other guys were. Once we got linked up with everybody, Seth kind of pushed forward with his, his sniper rifle and was helping to provide cover. Dave and them had already found a route down and were helping to move casualties, so we just continued to pull everybody else off that was up there, made sure we had all of our gear, and then made our way down. We basically had to hold our ground the best we could so that the medevac birds were comfortable enough flying in to exfil those casualties and then you know, and then go from there. So and they were taking fire the whole entire time. So they were awesome pilots, but they came in and, and really, I mean, they saved the day really helping those guys get out of there. But I think that day, one of the worst predicaments that I've been in in my life at that point, the experience from that has helped me, I think through my whole entire career, just remain level-headed and focus on what needs to happen as opposed to what is happening. My current team leader always jokes that my heart rate never gets above 50. He's always wondering like why I don't ever get excited. I'm like, there's really nothing to get excited about right now. I'm very proud of him and I've always thought that he um, can do anything and, and deserves anything that comes to him, but this award is really obviously a step above everything else. I was extremely proud of the Silver Star. I think it's an honor for, it's an honor for me to receive it on on behalf of the Special Forces Regiment, really, um, and, and kind of hopefully, you know, represent the regiment in a in a positive manner, and and really kind of help get the story out about 
you know, what it is that, that we're actually doing and, and what Green Berets are actually capable of.